Hey, how's it going? All right. It's great to see you. And today I am going to be reflecting on reflection and maybe doing a little refracting on refraction. And also I'm going to be showing you some tools that you can find online that are going to help you to figure out how to locate images. What? Image formation. That's what we're going to be learning all about. Image for nation. For na formation. Image formation is what we're going to be doing. Image for the nation. And let's first of all play around with plain mirrors. We're going to start with this first. And this is your Ray Diagrams that everyone here is all about. Not your Ray Donovan. That's an award-winning television show about a fixer. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fix your lack of understanding about optics. Optics. Light. Light can bend. Light can bounce off of things. Reflecting. It can bend. Refraction. But let's get to reflection first. So, looking at my object over here on this side of the screen, let's just scroll down a little here so we can see all our options. This is from ophysics.com. And I will give the links down below. <laughs> I like doing that. So by going down below, you know that I mean, you know, in the comments or whatnot. No, the, you know, in the little thing about the video, the blurb, as it were. So let's talk about a few little rays. You see at the bottom here, I'm not going to show grids and axes. I mean, that's cool, but, and it makes it way more accurate when you're figuring out angles, but meh. it also makes it a little messy. Let's imagine I have an object here. This is a mirror. And on the other side of the mirror, in virtual space, an image will appear. Well, how do I know where the image will appear and what it will look like? Simple. I start by looking at rays of light that are bouncing off the object. Some are bouncing off the tip of the arrow up here. It's an arrow. The object is an arrow. This, by the way, sometimes people get confused and they're like, that's a ray of light. No, 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 no. This is a ray of light bouncing off the object. Okay. And there's two rays of light. One kind of hit it here and bounced off and came and went into the mirror that way and one ray of light bounced off here showing resolving what this object was looking like at the very tip and bouncing off here and then same thing at the bottom those are the incident rays and they got what reflected out okay now notice down here i'm going to say show normals well, i want to show the normals um well this is what a normal looks like bam it is a line perpendicular to the mirror, i.e. at a 90 degree angle to the mirror. I'm trying to draw one of those little squares in there. It tells you, oh, that's perpendicular to the mirror. So the angle that the ray, the incident ray comes in at, right, the angle relative to the normal, is equal to the angle that the reflected ray comes out at. I'm going to take the normals away for just a second because they just mess everything up. And I am, we haven't found the image yet. We have not found the image yet. So what do we need to show find the image? Well, the image is created where the reflected rays intersect. But these reflected rays are not going to intersect right, in any normal way. But let's come back and look. Here. So I started my bad where the incident rays intersect. So let's just sorry, let me just show you the virtual rays coming back. What? So let's look right here. This ray coming back here. Boom. Well, let's just look at the intersection points. The image is going to be created right there. Okay. So let's take the virtual rays away for just a sec. Let's take the reflected rays just a sec. And let's take the incident rays a sec. So you're going to draw a ray diagram. We know the image is probably going to be around here, but can we prove it by geometric analysis? Well, yes, we can. Yes, we can. To quote a great precedent. Boom. Comes in. Incident rays coming in. Those rays get reflected back out. And where is the image created? Somewhere in here. You can see, right, like these rays coming back out, this reflected ray coming back out here, and this reflected ray coming back out here, right? They're never going to meet each other, all right? 
this reflected ray coming back out here, this reflect reflected ray coming back out here, off the same point, right? They're never going to meet each other. So where are we going to, where are they going to meet? Throw the virtual rays in there. Boom! We just extend these reflected rays back, and the image is created. Is it a real image? No. It's a virtual image. So, question you might ask, what happens if we have to bend the mirror? Well, we don't have to bend the mirror. What happens if we have a bent or curved mirror? Are the ray diagrams different? Yes, they are, son. Very different. And sometimes real rays of reflected light intersect and you get a real image. Sometimes you don't. So let's play around with this a little bit. I'm going to turn off these rays. Boom. And this is sim bucket. I, object height is 10 centimeters. The image height. Okay. So this here is the object. It is a candle. This is the image that's created when this candle is reflected in a curved mirror. What kind of curved mirror is it? It is a concave mirror. Boom. It's like it's caved in. Like, boom. Like, this is caved in. Hey, you want to find a concave mirror at home? Get a spoon. It's also a convex mirror, but I'll explain that in a sec. So, let's do a ray diagram. And really, what do we do a ray diagram for? Like, what did we do it for here? To figure out where the image was located, what it looked like, what it was shaped like. Is it bigger, smaller, same size? Is it real or virtual? All these different things that we're going to learn about the image that's created by the object in the mirror. So let's talk about this image that's created by this object in this mirror. So this is the C, center of curvature. We also call it 2F. Why? Because 2F is boom. Double F. F is the focal point. Focal point? What? What's that, Mr. Plus? Well, simple. Any ray of light that comes along parallel to the principal axis, that thing here, will be reflected through the focal point. If I had a ray of light that came right along here, boom, straight in, it would come reflected straight back out. Let's say I had a ray of light that came in here. Pew! came in hit here where's it going to come when it gets reflected you don't have to ask it ran came in parallel to the principal axis you know it comes back out through the focal point so the focal point is where the light gets focused hmm i wonder if that's why they called it that i don't know i don't want to get bogged down in that so what kind of image does get created well i'm going to do something simple let's take two rays we're going to take one ray that goes bounces off the top of the object comes and goes through the focal point. I'm going to do a second ray that's the opposite of the first ray. It comes in through woo, the focal point and gets reflected back parallel to the principal axis. So if you think about it, this ray, boom, is just the opposite of this ray, right? Which comes parallel through the focal. This one, through the focal, back parallel. Okay? So, where these two reflected rays intersect, the image will be created. Now, what happens if they don't get, if they don't intersect? Well, then we don't have a real image created, right, in real space, but rather we'll have a virtual image created over here, okay? So, boom, ray one comes in at this angle. Ray two, boom, comes in here, and guess what? The reflected rays, reflected ray 1 right here, and reflected ray 2 right here, they intersect right at this point here. So what can we say about any object in a concave mirror that is outside of C or 2F, that's beyond the center of curvature? If the object is beyond the center of curvature, the image will appear. Let's do a little analysis. Upside down, inverted, that is... It will appear to be real. It's real because it's where real rays of light intersect, right? Real reflected rays of light are intersecting. It would be, did I say inverted? Yes, I believe I said inverted. I said it would real. It would be smaller, so it's magnified. It's smaller size, attitude, location. And, of course, location would be between F 
and 2f. And no matter where I put it, or f and c, no matter where I put the object, as long as it's in those parameters, it's outside of that space, you can see the object, if I bring it further away, it just gets tinier and tinier and tinier. If I bring it infinitely far away, it will just approach the focal point, f, the image created. It'll never get onto the other side. What happens if I'm in between? Well, look at what, when, I'm, when I'm right at C, the image created is actually located exactly where the object is, only it's upside down, but it's the exact same height. This is how magic works. So if you have a person, you can kind of create the illusion that that person is like somewhere else, maybe upside down, I don't know, you could shoot bullets through this image and the object wouldn't be hurt. And that would be a magic trick. Bullet catch, I would call that one. Um, so, that's a little bit of magic. But it's also science. And <laughs> let's move on. Let's move the image in between C and F, right? Between two times the focal point and the focal point. The center of curvature and the focal point. When the image, when the object is in here, the image is beyond C, right? You see it's beyond the center of curvature? That's C, 2F. When it's beyond C, and it's larger, it's inverted, and it's still real, real rays of light are meeting. What happens if we're sitting right on the focal point? Something magical happens. We get an image height that is infinity big. Now I know that sounds cool. You've created an infinite, but that just means it's impossible. What that means is that the image cannot be created. Why? Because it's impossible to, like the first ray will work, okay? It comes in parallel to the principal axis and then gets reflected out, whoa, through the focal point, kind of. Um, this one though, ray two is impossible. It just goes, how can it go through the focal point and then get reflected back parallel to the principal axis if it's going straight in this direction? It'll never hit the mirror. So what do we wind up if you're sitting right at this point and if you have a makeup mirror or even a spoon, there's a certain point as you move the spoon closer or further away or the makeup mirror closer or further away, these are all concave mirrors, uh, that the image will just disappear and it'll get all like strangely distorted like a funhouse mirror and then your face will disappear altogether. And what happens when you get a little closer? All of a sudden it will reappear and it'll be bigger. What? Okay. So when you're inside of F, when you're inside of F, what do you get? You get ray one. Ray one comes here, here, boom. Ray two goes, I know you were like, why does it go in that direction? Well, because of this. It goes through the focal point and then back out parallel to the principal axis. That's how you do it. If you were doing this by hand, you would put your ruler on the focal point, touch it on the top of the object, and then just draw it till it hit the mirror and came back out. And since neither of these reflected rays of light intersect, you see how they're just moving further and further apart? They could go infinitely far and they would only get infinitely far from each other. That's a sad story of these two rays of light traveling through space. But if you go back into virtual space, they meet. Ah, yes, they do come together. And an image is created where they come together. That's sort of, that's sort of how it works, man. That's the, the, the magic of optics. Where the reflected rays of light come together, an image is created. I do declare. It's not like I'm declaring it. It's more like I do observe. Because that's how science works. You don't like declare stuff. You're like, I do observe this. And that's what we observe. Uh, what, what can we say about the image? Well, it's magnified, it's larger, uh, that's its size, it's attitude, upright, so same as the image. Um, attitude means, like, is it inverted or whatever? Um, you gotta have a good attitude. Yo, like, I'm upright, what's your attitude? Well, I'm standing upright. Um, location, virtual space, other side of the mirror. I mean, you can get detailed and measure the actual distance it would appear to be away from the mirror. Uh, and then type, this is a virtual image. It is not a real image. Uh, anyone ever read Go, Go Dog Go? One of the greatest books of all time. This is a red car. It is not a blue car. It is a red car. Oh my gosh, sorry. I'm off topic. Let me get back onto this. This is a virtual image. It is not a real image. It is a virtual image. That's why that reminded me of Go Dog Go. You should read the book. I don't want to spoil it at the end, but there's an awesome party in a tree. All right. Uh, and these are the three locations. Now, what happens if we have a convex mirror? 
Like, how can I turn this mirror into a convex mirror? Well, the same way you can turn a spoon into a convex mirror when you're turning it into a concave mirror. All you do is you turn around, boom, and you reflect from the other side. So this is a convex mirror. And every single image created in a convex mirror is the same. You don't have to worry about, oh, am I between C and F? Am I beyond F? Want to know why? Because in a convex mirror, the focal point is virtual. What does that mean? Well, what that means is that when you bring an object in parallel to the principal, when a ray comes in parallel to the principal axis, it gets reflected out, but all of the rays spread apart. It's sometimes called a fish-eyed mirror, if you can imagine, right? It's also sometimes called a diverging mirror. I don't know if people call it that. They call it when it's a lens, they call it a diverging lens. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is this, is that the reflection never meets. So the focal point is where the reflected rays come together. Focal point is on the other side of the mirror. It's virtual. To find the focal point, you have to extend back virtual rays from the reflected ray. And that's where the focal point is. So one ray, ray one comes in parallel to the principal axis, out through the focal point. How do you know? You put a ruler here and you just basically, boom, just hit it straight from that point. Second one goes in through the focal point and out parallel to the principal axis. Well, how does that work? You put your ruler right on the focal point and then the other end of the ruler right on top. You connect the two and boom. But you know what? It, it can't keep going here, right? So when it hits the mirror here, it comes back out parallel to the principal axis. So in through the focal point, back out parallel is two. One is uh, parallel and back out through the focal point, and where the virtual rays of light meet, there they are. And what do we know about a convex mirror? Objects in this mirror are smaller than they may appear. That's the bad thing. The good thing is, because the way the rays of light spread out, you can actually see at like you know 180 degrees you can see on a much much you don't see on a 90 degrees but you see like on a 180 degree with a nice fish-eyed mirror type thing and um, that's why we use these on the side mirrors of cars convex mirrors as well and what can we say about the image created well we can say this about the image created the image is boom, virtual the image is smaller the image like like they say in the warning, smaller than it, than, than, than it appears, larger than it appears. Sorry, my bad. They say the object is larger than it appears. The image is smaller than the object. And uh, location, virtual space, size, smaller, attitude, upright, and type, virtual, not a real image, a virtual image. And now I am going to finish off by talking to you a little bit about lenses. Now lenses the lenses reflect light well i mean they do like the lenses of my glasses are reflecting light back so you'll see all sorts of shiny things like if i look into my little special face light here you'll see weird circles and that's kind of a cool effect but at the same time that my lenses are reflecting some of the light that's coming off the surface of the most of the light going through these lenses these awesome costco readers with special blue block the light that goes through these glasses gets bent what that's right because as light moves from one object to another it bends what so let me just show you imagine here is my thing so as the light comes in here it comes in at this angle now, like i said some of the light gets reflected off this surface which happens to be water but the light that travels through the water gets slightly bent why because it's literally slowing down it's and like imagine if you were in a car and you hit something that slowed you down you'd be like you'd be like driving along you're like man you're like Meh! you sort of slow down and you kind of turn Meh! you kind of spin out of control maybe you'd flip over uh fortunately light doesn't do that it just sort of slows down and Meh! bends towards the normal so this bending of light now imagine if i made the material glass because it's index of refraction. The more I, I change this thing called an index of refraction, the more the light bends. Uh, here, let me reset it. Yo, resetting it to the wall. Ah. Uh, that's pretty disappointing, actually. Oh, my bad, because I, I, I reset it to the water. There we go. You see how it's bending away, bending towards. If it's just going from air to air, it goes straight. Okay, so this is what we call refraction. 
the bending of light. So what does this have to do with lenses? Well, if you have light going through air and then goes through the lenses of your glasses, and imagine that that lens is not, boom, you see how I hit that? Imagine that that lens is a curved piece of glass. So the light that goes through this part of the lens is bent less than the light that goes through this part of the lens. So WTH, well, first of all, no matter which way the light's coming from, that's kind of, this is kind of cool, no matter which way the light is coming from, you have focal points on either side, right? But you also have the idea of a focal point. And when you want to know what does the image look like? So here's the dilio. The light goes through this thing and it gets reflected on your eye, like your retina, like the lens of your eye. And that is how you, you know, you make something look bigger. So let's look at this. It's called a converging lens. So let's say you're like me and um, you have problems reading, like which is something that just happened to me later in life. A little bit sad. Let's say you're like me. You got problems reading. Um, you need to get readers. What do you need? You need something that makes the object appear to be bigger. What happens if I take something and stick it right close up to my face? Still can't really see anything. It's like, it's weird. Oh, my bad. If, if, if I take my glasses and I pull them away from my face, there's a point in time where objects look like they're upside down. It has to be kind of far away, but everything kind of goes blurry. Then when I get, if I have the glass within the nice focal point range, all of a sudden get, what do I get? I get an image that's created that's bigger. Okay. Now that virtual image gets projected on the lens on my eye and then things look bigger so I can read them. What does that diverging lens do? Just the opposite makes things look smaller just like you might imagine and the deal with a diverging lens no matter where you bring the image the object I should say the image is always smaller and always virtual right where rays meet. What about a converging lens? Well that's the same as a concave mirror in terms of the principle as you bring the object within the focal point you reach a point where you can't resolve an image at all and then you get you go to a virtual image and then on the other side so converging lens same principles in terms of what the image is created as a concave mirror diverging lens same principle as a con vex mirror do not forget about the principle of refraction bending light that's why lenses create a focal point at all do not forget about the idea of bending a mirror if you don't bend the mirror you never have a focal point uh, in any real space so you, you get images created like in a plain mirror plain mirrors don't have a focal point because they don't bend the light and that is where I will leave it. I hope you had a wonderful time and I will catch you in the next video where we're going to learn more about optics because optics is awesome and so are you for making it to the end of this video. Peace out. Play around on these things. Again, I'm going to link them down in the you know, linkaroo and um, have a great day. Bye.